Okay, so as mentioned, survival, profit maximization will be the se second thing. Okay, maximizing revenue. Revenue and profit. What's the difference? Mr. So Mark won't put you on the spot, put you under pressure. Um, revenue. If I say that I have made a million rands worth of revenue this year, but my company only made profits of 100,000 rand. I assume that your profit is your income less Okay, so income less expenses, we all agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically that's it. Yeah, you wanna elaborate, Kile? Oh, your revenue is like before your costs have been taken into consideration. Your revenue is before your costs and other things are put into consideration. So when I shared with you guys that I had that UKZN uh, contract to do the to mobilize and do the events for this year, okay, I did share that with you guys, right? No, no. Oh, yes, I'm gonna show you this quickly. Okay, because this is exciting. Oh, guys, how did I forget to show you all of this good, interesting information? Uh, it's a very good question. Okay, no, well, I'm sorry, I told you. No? Okay. Uh, favoritism. Oh, favoritism. Oh, that was very I do have an NGO, yeah. I've had one for years now. Um, I use it. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for UK as an end. That's very true, I know. <sighs> easy come, easy go, Mr. Babbo. We need to. We must work hard. No, that's corruption. No more corruption. You know. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you an idea. Okay, so gents, I don't know how I didn't share this with you guys, but basically, just before COVID happened, I got a contract from UKZN to host all the events for basically the five different UKZN campuses. My company, Straight Marketing, got this contract. It was worth four million rand. The budget was three million rand. So when I shared this with the other customers, they got very excited, thinking, "Sir, you're going to be a millionaire." But that is the revenue that I was going to make, the profit that I was going to make, and I'll quickly share with you here. So here it is. So revenue, total revenue was three points, three million rand, fifteen thousand rand. Uh, how do you say that? Three, three, million, three, million, three, million, three, million, three million and fifteen thousand rand. Eh? Yeah. Sounds very dodgy. Okay, but yeah, basically yeah. that's how much UK ZN gives us. And then these were going to be the expenses. So we we're going to do the promotions for the five different campuses at forty-four thousand rand each. Total promotional budget was two hundred twenty thousand. Okay, we we're going to have an artist and VIP area, which is going to cost them half a million. Then we we're going to do the main events. Sound in the stage was 155,000. Mobile toilets, 1,500 each, 7,000. You get the point here. Artists, artists were very interesting. 322,000. So he has the, uh, it was AKA, I'll show you now if I've got it here. Artists, so the artists were, okay. Listen to me. Okay, so um, doing Dan Dan and these guys act and inspire and the queen. Uh, you guys mostly won't know, but some of the guys will know. Okay, they were going to be the MCs. Ricky Rick, he was first 130,000 for 15 minutes. We negotiated uh, him down to 55,000 uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, okay, you guys want to go work for people. 15 minutes. I know, you must, you must start singing or something. 150, yeah. sir. Hectic. Okay, Sasha, all these guys, all these guys. Back, back, back to the main events, I just want to show you. Okay, so the main thing that I want to show you here is that my company, which is straight marketing, there it is, that's how much money we were going to make. Okay, so if I just put this to the side quickly, okay, we're going to make 20% of the fee, so we're going to make 600,000, okay, and then obviously 28% tax, we're going to come up to about 250,000, and there was me and two other guys that I recruited. The one guy introduced us to the UK Zealand president, the other guy went to the NC Youth League, so I contradict myself, it was a connection type of thing, okay. In fact, we had two pay money in the side to get this contract. Uh -huh. But the amount of money that basically increases the corruption. So just to give you an idea, the presence of UKZN, now I'm sharing with you guys only, we're gonna get a hundred thousand rand just for giving us this contract. But before he even did anything, we gave him something like eight thousand rand just to say go buy some groceries and <laughs> don't talk to us when you're hungry. That's he he said I'm hungry, I can't talk to you guys. So we're like okay just eight thousand rand now we talk. After that he gave us the contract and this is Bandu revenue, okay? And the, no, no, revenue is that, three million rand, and this is the profits that we're gonna make, 450,000 rand, okay? So I'll share with you guys, I can't believe I didn't share this with you guys, some very interesting things. I'll show you the, I'll show you the proposal. So, so now the thing is, 
No more COVID happens, no more events, no more gatherings, so more than 50 people. The whole yeah, well, he's still gonna somehow, somewhat. We're gonna have 20,000 students, 5,000 from each campus. There's no so way 20,000 students will be allowed. Anyway, let's carry on. Um, where was I? Here. Okay. So, as I was saying, we wanna survive, we wanna make a profit, we wanna maximize revenue and also sales maximization, okay? So, short run costs. We've got two types of short run costs. Okay, there's fixed costs and variable costs. When we talk about fixed costs, and I'm gonna go past this very fast, because this is EMS stuff. Give me a fixed cost ICA for a business. Rent, 100%. So, the definition of a fixed cost, white, what would you say a fixed cost is? The cost that doesn't change even if the number of- 100%. 100%. Okay. Give us some more examples. Uh, another example would be insurance. Yeah. Insurance could be a fixed cost because if you, it doesn't you pay insurance on monthly installments, so that's the same thing. Electricity will be variable because uh, right now we're going to pay more, okay? and then if I switch it off, we're going to pay less. Okay. So that's different. That's a variable cost. Okay. So now we, by variable cost definition, what's your understanding? Something like the cost of it changes. Uh, the cost of it changes? Good. Good. So, so give us an example. Yeah, find an example. So, so an example like machinery or like goods that you produce a product. So like if I'm producing more of a good, then I would... I like the second example. I like the second example. If we are going to produce this, we're going to need plastic, we're going to need colors, we're going to need all of these things, right? So if we produce two units, we'll use a certain amount of plastic and a certain amount of colors. But once we produce a thousand units, we then use more plastic, more colors. So that's the variable cost. The more you produce, okay, the more of these inputs you actually need. Yes, Mr. Pierre. So will the salaries be variable cost or fixed cost? Okay. Very good question. Very good question. There are two types of things. There's something called a, a wage or a wage, and there's something called a salary. Okay. Basically, a wage is paid to unskilled workers, people like you guys, okay? Because you no, no offense, because you're unskilled, because you don't have a degree, you don't have nothing. Okay, you've got an NQF level one. You've got an NQF level one. Okay, so you're basically an unskilled worker, you get paid a wage. Okay, a wage you either get paid bi weekly, okay, or in a fortnight, every two weeks, okay, or on a Friday, okay, um, whereas a wage once a month, I mean, salary rather, thank you, once a month, fixed amount. $50,000. Yes, sir. So, so, let's say, sir, um, uh, I thought of a business, sir, like, I cut people's hair, sir. Yep. And then, sir, that's time it goes by, sir. I get, like, enough experience, sir. And then, I go apply for a job at Legends Barber, sir. Right. Because they require training and, uh, and not training necessarily, sir, but experience. Yep. Yeah. And, sir, and they pay me every month. So that's for making me an arm school la uh, laborer. So, a very good question, okay? So, there are now certificates and things that you can do if you're a barber and you can go for these courses and whatnot. The minute you get some sort of qualification or some sort of uh, certificates, I'll put it that way, and then you move from that unskilled labor pool, okay? So, you might, be, you might know how to plumb and how to change plumbing stuff and whatnot, uh, but you don't have the trade. So, you don't have the actual certificate to say that you can do it. And you see a lot of that where, I mean, where I come from, realize ah. where people know to do they People can fix a car for you, okay? And do the whole engine, put it back together, but they're not qualified. So technically, okay, according to the, the definition, they're actually not skilled laborers, okay? But the minute that they actually get a qualification behind it, it then makes them skilled. Yes, sir. Um, so let's say like you, you're, uh, you've got a small business, like is it lawyer or actuary or something like that, and you charge by the hour, so, you are by yourself in this business, so won't your salary differ from month to month depending on how many clients you get? It will also depend on you as a business person, okay? If that was me, I would then put the target that at the end of the month I want to make a salary of 15,000 rand, okay? And then everything that I do is going to be based on that idea that I need to get, c cover my costs of 10,000 rand, but I also need to make a salary of 15,000 rand. So I'll then be pushing for 25,000 rand a month. The question is, if you don't make that 25,000, what do you then do? Okay, that's a different conversation. But you also want to pay yourself a salary, even if you run your own business. Okay, otherwise, it's called cool. the accountants. If you just take out money and you're not paying yourself, it's called cool. oh, drawing. There you go, drawing. Okay. So total cost, so fixed cost, we understand. Variable cost, we understand. There's a lot of stuff that's been said about it in the book.
But to fixed cost and variable cost equal your total cost. This is still the simple stuff. We haven't got to the exciting stuff. Yes, sir. So, so, so is a wage a uh, variable? Do you know when you're talking about wages and salary? Yes, sir. Are those both fixed costs? Or so the salary would be a fixed cost and the wage would be a variable cost because the wages can change. Okay? And when you do business studies, we talk about different types of wages that you can get. So depending, some people will get a wage depending on how much of these less they produce. So you produce a certain amount, you get a certain amount, so that could change every week. And some people get a wage depending on how much time they actually spend at work. So you work from 6 to 6, but on Monday you work from 6 to 12, so you won't get paid for four days. If I leave now, if I don't come tomorrow, I still get my salary as it is at the end of the month. Okay, that's because it's a salary, it's fixed. Okay. All right, so fixed, um, we agree that uh, fixed costs and variable costs are equal to total costs. We're all happy. Okay, now it's starting to build up. We're looking at the cost for donuts or dense donuts, Mr. Schultz. Mm -hmm. Basically, we've got the quantity that's mm -hmm. produced on the left-hand side, Q, output, mm -hmm. 0 to 10 units to 20 units to 30 units to 40 units. So, Mr. Desai, without looking at the board, please look at me. If you are producing 0 units, what is your variable cost going to be? 0. 0. Why? Because obviously, the variable cost change in direct proportion to the number of units produced. 100%. 100%. So if we use this class as a business, okay, and COVID happened, and we didn't come for a month, and the electricity was off for a month, our electricity bill would be zero. Because we're not producing anything, we're not doing anything. The minute we come back from COVID, we switch on the lights, we then start paying whatever variable cost the electricity is going to be. Happy? Okay? The fixed costs, Mr. Nika, why are they all the same? Again, just a reminder, rehashing. Because the, uh, the price of it doesn't change. Regardless of how much quantity you use. Okay. So when you're a business person, you'll have your own targets to say, my target is 70 donuts so that I can make a thousand rand. Okay? But you still know that regardless of how many donuts you produce, your rent will always be 120. It will be the same. So we're happy there. Your variable costs obviously change as output changes. So if you look at zero, your variable cost is zero. Because you're not producing anything, you don't need any inputs into the production process. Okay? But the minute you start producing, and then it goes up 100. You produce 20, 160. You produce 30, okay, and it goes up up until 910 where you're producing 70 units. And then your total costs are very simple, okay, variable cost plus fixed cost equal to your total cost. Simple stuff. Yes? Thank you. Okay, I move on. The law of diminishing marginal returns. I'm going to say this to you now. You're probably not going to understand it, okay? If you do, that's great, but if you don't, I'm also happy with that. But I just want to tell you now. And then once I explain where it comes in, it then should make sense. So the law of diminishing marginal return says that employing more variable inputs into, or in, rather, let me start again, sorry, my English. Employing more variable inputs, thank you, Pandu, uh, increases outputs, okay, initially at a small additional cost, followed by rapidly increasing costs per unit. Does this make sense, Sayon? Yeah. Nothing? So say it wrong. Employing more variable inputs increases output initially at a small additional cost, followed by rapidly increasing costs per unit. So if I had to break down, yeah? so, so if if I like uh, invest in something like and it like starts going uh, like slowly, so. And in the long term, it starts like increasing in, in value or something like that. Yeah. So it's something like that, okay? But we obviously looking at costs here, and you'd be looking at more. Uh, uh, so you your thinking is right, and I'm happy that your thinking is uh, logical. I'm putting it in a different sense. Hundred you know? percent. But actually, what you're saying is that when you first increase the variable cost, yeah, when you first increase the variable cost, the first product will work out cheaper. But as you go in the long run, like your hundred product, it will work out more. 100%. This is 100%. Okay, let's say it again. Okay, you can, it's nice and loud. So, so you, when you produce your first, when you increase your variable inputs, the first product will work out cheaper because you only produce one. But as you produce 100 products, because there's more, and your variable, your variable inputs are dependent on how many you produce. So when you produce more, it will increase. But if you produce less, it will work out cheaper. You're 100 percent right, and I've got a perfect example to explain it. Let me just take Palmer's question first. Yeah, yes, sir. This way, variable inputs are those wages. So that would be things like wages, electricity, 
uh, let's count them raw materials, if you're using raw materials into the production process. Okay, whatever you need to add to make your product, depending on the quantity, will be your variable input. Yes, sure. So couldn't you use labor as an example? So when, when you um, Perfect making example. one good, so you only need one a small amount of labor, you're not gonna, it's not gonna have high cost. But, but the more goods you make, the more labor you're gonna employ, you're gonna have high cost. Perfect example. Yeah. Perfect example. Okay, so before I get to the nice, interesting, let me just see here, uh, fixed cost, variable cost, total cost. Okay, let me, let me explain this to you because the phone's gonna ring and I'm very excited and I think I need to exp explain this to you guys now. Okay, so what that statement means, what that statement means is this. And I usually use this example by asking people to come to the board or come up and assist me, but obviously COVID has happened, so you guys are gonna have to bear with me. If this was a price stand, right? And we owned a Chisanyama kind of business. How much time do I have left? Okay, if this was a price stand, how much time, Michael? Uh, four, 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 four minutes. Four minutes. Okay, cool. So if this was a price stand, gentlemen, okay, and we owned a Chisanyama business, if I was alone buying meat, okay, and I can only buy two steaks at a time because I've got two hands, I will come to the price stand. Okay, uh, can I just draw it here so the guys at the back can see? I will come to this price stand and I will buy two steaks of meat because I can only, ha, 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 school fees? <laughs> hey, there you go, okay, I'll come here because I can only buy two steaks of meat at, at, at a time, okay? And let's say it's 50 rand per yeah. steak of meat, okay? Eating expensive meats, Baba. Okay? What this statement is saying is that if we put more inputs into this production process, it will increase output. And it's 100% correct. Because there's enough space for Mr. Vambo to also come and stand next to me, we pay him. He's an additional cost to the business, labor. He's a variable cost. But we're paying him. But when Vambo comes in, he's going to contribute two stakes, which is actually going to increase our revenue even more than the cost of Mambo being here. Are we still on the same page? Okay, but there's still enough space in this price stand to employ more variable inputs. So we'll then get Mr. Bandu, one of my favorite students, to then come through, okay? And Mr. Bandu will then buy his two stakes there. So now we're making 50 times six, which is 300 rand, okay? And Mr. Bandu's labor is cheap, okay, because he's an unskilled neighbor, he's a cheap neighbor, so he, he comes <laughs> So he comes here and he bribes. So now myself, Bambo, and Mr. Bandu are all bribed, we're all happy, and we're making 300 rand. The question is if we want to add an additional variable cost or variable inputs, my mask is getting wet, okay, additional variable inputs. So we want to hire Mr. Mombo to come join us. If we hire Mr. Ngobo, he will be an additional cost to the business, but now Mr. Ngobo has to wait, wait while us three are buying. What is happening when he's waiting? We are still paying him, but is he actually bringing anything into the business? No. So what happens when we hire Mr. Mabinza to also come? They now need to wait for either me or Bandu or Mr. Mbambo, Mlambo Mbambo to actually leave the price stand first and then they can actually utilize the resources. So let's read this again. Employing more variable inputs, putting more labor into this process, increases output first, we can buy more stakes, right? At a small additional cost, because these guys don't cost a lot to hire, right? But it will be followed by rapidly increasing cost per unit. Why? Because the more people we hire, the more they have to sit on the side, and then we have to pay them. Alternatively, what would happen? What happens if you buy another price stand? Hundred percent. That is the alternative. But what happens when you buy another price stand? That's more cost. Right? More, more cost. More so, but then if you increase your cost, so then you still. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so centrist paribus, all else equal. Yes, Mr. Davis. Yeah, so <laughs> you have to try to figure out which way is more um, like financially sustainable. Whether you keep employing more guys, whether that's going to be cheaper in the end run than obviously buying long term. Hundred percent. So as a business owner, as, as a business owner, you have to get to a point where you review your business and you look Pediatri, rather, sorry, and you ask yourself, right, is it worth getting another price stand for ten million rand, or should I hire more people and keep them idle, or what should I do? But you can then make those decisions. But this is what I'm more interested in. 
I'm interested in, thank you. <laughs> oh, Pile, how can you just laugh at me just like that? Anyway, Mr. Marvin, yes, sir. Sir, but then let's say you hire one more person, sir, and yes. let's say six people. Yes, sir. So won't it be better because instead of making 200 grand for the second round, you can actually make 200 grand average. So start again, what's your thing again? Let's so say you hire? Uh, let's say you hire a third person, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, so then there's six people at the well, Brian Heath. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better than making 200 grand than 100? But remember, when those people are there, I hear what you're saying, but when those people are getting hired, there's no space for them to bribe. So we pay for them to stand and not do anything at that point in time. And that's why our costs then start increasing rapidly. So as long as there's still space, it's all still good. We can add additional resources, add more variable inputs, and they'll increase more meats because there's more people prying. Okay? And it'll be a small cost because it doesn't cost a lot to hire unskilled labor. But the, more, the moment you actually, I'm going to stop talking now because my English is really running away. Hundred percent. Okay. So your fixed costs are going to stay at one hundred and twenty. Okay. Mr. White, press us. Why or where do you think your variable costs are going to start? At which point? And why? I think it's going to start at zero two. Okay. And why? So because when you have a quantity of zero products, so then you don't have any variable costs. Your variable costs only come in one two. Yes. So I hope you appreciate the fact that I keep asking the same things to different people so they can cement all of this. That's like the fourth time this has been answered, or third time this has been answered today. 100% correct. Therefore, your fixed cost aside will start where? Fixed cost will start where? Yo. At which point? And why? So, so, so I'll ask again. Okay. So your fixed cost, sorry. Fixed cost start there. They go straight. Your variable cost. Starts here, okay. Uh, your total cost is I'm sorry. Where do your total cost start? Total cost is on the fixed cost. On the fixed cost, he says. Uh, one more, what did he say? Let's try zero. Zero. Oh. 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 Where do your fixed cost start? Let me explain this in a very simple way. I know you guys know the answer. Your fixed cost are standard, hundred and twenty. Across. Your variable costs start at zero, and the reason they start at zero is because when you're producing nothing, you still pay zero variable costs because you're producing nothing. But your total costs, okay? Start 120. Start 120? Hands up 120? Okay? So they start at 120. Why? Because even if you're producing nothing, you still have to pay 120. Yeah, that's the difference. If you're producing nothing, you still pay 120. Yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. and that's what it looks like. Average cost, let's quickly look at this. Thank you, Hibbert. Look at all this time and it wasted. Okay, the total cost of production divided by the number of units is produced. My question to you guys is, now you, you look like you want to answer this. What is the average of anything? How do you work out the average of anything like this? Um, you divide, you, um, amount produced divided by the total number of units. 100%, 100%. So in your report, you always have what is called an aggregate, right? Okay, and that aggregate decide, usually looking good, what does it, what, how is it worked out? Yes, sir? So you take all your percentages and then divide them by the number of subjects you use. 
you take your seven subjects, whatever percentage you got, you divide them in a seven, you get an average. So if you wanted to work out average cost, Mr. Marvel, how would you work out average cost? All your costs? You divide by the quantity that you, you, you're working with, okay? So average revenue, revenue, okay, divided by the quantity. Average anything, okay, are we happy with that? Okay, so the total cost of production are divided by the number of units produced, okay, short. The second point there is that average costs are effectively the cost per unit of production. So if you want to produce an extra unit, what is the average cost of producing that extra unit? Yep, and you'll see the example, so don't, 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 don't stress too much, okay? Average cost can be divided up into average fixed costs, and obviously average variable costs. Variable costs. Okay? And average total cost will be then your average fixed cost plus your average variable cost put together or your average total cost. Easy stuff. Remember this part point is going up on teams, so you will have it. Okay? Okay? Happy? So we've got this table. This table is the same thing that we saw Bandu, quantity up to 70. 120 fixed costs. Variable costs go up to 910. Total costs are your fixed costs, variable costs put together. So we've seen all of this. Okay, this now we haven't seen. Average fixed cost. It's simple, Mr. Mabinza. You take your fixed cost divided by quantity. Fixed cost are 120 divided by zero. Anything divided by zero is undefined. Zero, 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 not even zero, it's undefined. It's not there, okay? Um, but let's look at this one. That means our fixed cost of 400 divided by 50. Okay, 400 divided by 50 would equal? Three. Okay, three? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's work out this one. No, I'm the one that's messing up here. Okay, so fixed costs are 120 divided by 40 is 3. 120 divided by 2 is 6. 120 divided by 10 is 12. Okay, I'm just showing you that to work out your average, you just take your fixed cost divided by quantity. Average variable cost, variable cost Hibbert divided by quantity. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. 910 divided by 70 is 13. Okay. Happy Pile? Average variable cost, total cost divided by quantity, or your average variable cost uh, are equal to average fixed cost plus 100%. Or average variable cost minus your average fixed cost, am I right? Will give you your average total cost, or average variable cost plus average fixed cost will give you your average total cost. Okay. So this is supposed to be a plus. What I'm more interested in here is this line, your marginal cost. By definition, and this is the last thing I'm going to do today and say today. By definition, your marginal cost is the cost of producing an extra unit of output. One more unit of output. Your marginal cost curve follows the law of diminishing marginal returns, which says that costs will first decrease up until a certain point, and then they'll start to increase. And we now know, that's the nice thing, Mr. Mobile. we now know why costs decrease first, because there's space in the price stand. We can get more people in, it'll decrease our costs, we can produce more, okay? But it'll get to a point where hiring additional people, they'll have to be standing around, and if they're standing around, we're paying for them, our costs then start to skyrocket. So your marginal cost curve, you can't see it properly here. It is the change in total cost over the change in quantity. Now for the maths orphans in the class. Yes, Mr. Mabinza, how do you work out the change in anything, the change in anything. Please put up your hand if you can help us. Change in anything. Naidu, Naidu, how do you work out the change in anything? So you take Listen very carefully, my mentor. You take the one you have now currently minus the original. So you've got total cost, okay? Total cost or total cost here, my means are we happy? We here. So the one you have now is a hundred. 220 rather, where did I see 100? 220, okay, the minus? Minus 120. Minus 120, so the change here is? 100. The change in total cost, okay, it's supposed to be a triangle, change, change sign is a triangle. The change in total cost is basically yeah. saying, how did total cost change from where we were before to where we are now? So Mr. Mabinza, if we're producing 40 units and we now want to produce 50 units, 
our total cost has gone from 400 to 520. What was the change? I can automatically tell you that the change was 120, 100%. Okay? So now, Mr. Mabiza, help me answer this one. What is the change in quantity? If we go in from here to here, what is the change in quantity? 100%. If we're going from 70 backwards to 60, what's the change in quantity? Uh, yes, still, uh, 10. still 10, okay? Still, the change is still 10. So here, you've got your change in total cost. You go to your total cost, your change is 100 over your change in quantity, which is 10, okay? And then 100 divided by, is that right? Is that right? No. Yeah, no, this, I think these figures are, do you guys have this? Can you just take it out quickly, 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 quickly? What did you guys have? I mean, not the ones in your book. I'm saying the ones that you guys did. Do you guys do something similar to this? Did you guys get the same marginal cost? No, no, no. I think it was different. Okay, I think, I think uh, a lot has been said. Let's leave it there. I'll double check these figures. But the principle stands true. Marginal cost is a change in total cost over a change in quantity, divided by the change in quantity. Okay? Marginal cost follows the law of diminishing marginal returns. That's where I want to leave today's lesson. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Nice enough? Very little cost is directly proportional to the number of units produced. Right. So why would then the cost curve like straight? Why is it curved? Good question. Good question. Why does it? Why is the variable cost curve? Okay. So there's two things that are happening there. Right. Okay. The one thing is that. At first, initially, the costs are increasing in a decreasing way. I don't know if you've heard those concepts. Okay. So, forgive me if I draw it incorrectly. So, you are saying, why does it? Oh, let's actually go to it. Uh, so, you're asking this one. Okay. So, at this point in time here, yo, how do I explain this to you? So, it's only increasing slowly and then it starts going rapidly. So, yeah. So, at first, it initially increases in a decreasing way. So, it's increasing as if it was going to eventually go down, and then at some point in time, it starts increasing in an increasing way, and it starts increasing rapidly up. Um, I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to lie to you. So please ask me the exact same question again tomorrow. Why? Okay, why is it increasing in an increasing way initially, and then why is it increasing in an increasing way eventually? Okay, and hopefully I'll have the answer. Why is it increasing in an increasing way? Hopefully I'll have the answer for you by then. But you are right, it's not a straight line. Work for you, sir. It's not a straight line, yeah? I love homework. Okay, it's not a straight line. Um, yeah, it's not a straight line.